Welcome to this video presentation. It is about the myth surrounding the democracy as a concept and democratization as a practice in the young democratic states within the African continent today. Actually, there are different opinions about democracy. While many people still believe that democracy is a myth, um, some at the same time do argue that democracy is a creation of Western civilization that seeks to put the world under their optic and surveillance when it comes to how governments and states treat their fellow citizens and how governments deal with issues of the electoral justice. None of these may be or may not be true. It depends on the context and the perspective. One important thing that we need to keep our focus on is the question of governance issues and human rights in which there is call for standardization especially in the era of the United Nations. However, back to the conceptualization of democracy. How do young people today understand democracy? Maybe not so well because it appears in many cases that it is a decorative term used in the constitutions maybe to blackmail the citizens or rather to give a picture of something that is not substantially and in essence in existence in their in their realities. Perhaps this may make sense if we see certain tendencies that point at changing or amending constitutions to deal with the democracy as it is known. In the year 2005, the government of the Republic of Uganda removed the presidential term limit and that would allow the incumbent president to run for several other terms as so long as he's capable and he can do that. In the year 2015, the Republic of Uganda removed or expunged from the Book of Law the presidential age limit which stood at 75. The same tendency has been seen in various countries in the African continent running from Djibouti to the Ivory Coast as well as we have seen it running from Chad to the southmost part of Africa, Zimbabwe and other countries that from time to time have tended to mutilate the written constitution, especially concerning the presidential executive lifespan. And we have seen the Republic of Congo in which President Denis Nguesso has also managed to expunge the presidential term limit to allow him to run several times. In Cameroon, President Paul Bie, the oldest president existing in Africa today at 86 years, is still the president. We have seen the same in Djibouti, and 
equally in Rwanda and Burundi. In the year 2005, when President Peter Nkurunziza was elected to be in office for two terms, and in the year 2015, he was supposed to terminate his term and quit the office as the executive and as the president. But he convinced parliament in the argument that the first term he was not elected by the people of Burundi. At the referendum, Burundians voted overwhelmingly to support his third term in office, and he did it successfully. In the year 2015, the same repeat in Rwanda, in which the presidential term limit was expunged from the constitution through the referendum that amended the constitution. The Republic of Kenya is keen and is watching its neighbors with some kind of curiosity and concern as in the neighboring Somalia, President Mohammed Abdullahi from Ajo managed to convince parliament to extend its life for the next two years that includes vis-a-vis -vis the presidential term in office, something that has created uproar, but it is also seen as an affront to the democracy in Africa as we know it. But the substantive question here is why the presidential term limit why the presidential age limit when it comes to these African states that have received their independence and sovereignty after the independence and all of them have embraced and backed written constitution as the supreme law and the book of law that should guide and should give directions to how democracy is implemented in such countries. Let me take you through a short history of the African democracy before we get to the conclusion of this brief presentation. The year 1960 was known to be the year of Africa. It is so because in my considered opinion. Many African countries received their independence from their colonial masters between 1960 and 1970, but it proceeded to 1974 to 1994 and all the rest. But what happened in reality immediately after the independence of most of the African countries and after concerted effort by African nationalists, African pan-Africanists, after receiving such independence, most of the African nations within quotes and independent states fell into a disastrous period of time the dark period on the African continent in which many countries fell into civil war, uh, civil unrest, some serious and fatal conflicts, genocide, rivalries, uh, pitting different communities, different ethnic groups or tribes. Well, this is not far from the external interference in which European or the Western imperialists were keen in dividing and ruling Africa in what is known, quote-unquote, as neo-colonialism. 
This is a hunt for natural resources that are badly needed by the industrialized countries, but also it brought untold suffering and onslaught on the African democracy. In Uganda, President Museven was quoted saying, I quote, African problems and African solution. That means Africans themselves must find the solution to their problems. And that would be also related to the sustainable democracy. Liberal democracy has been on the mouth of every human rights advocate. But what does it entail? Does it fit in well with the African environment, with the African social settings? My question is yes and no. Yes, first because we all agree to certain international standards, certain standards that would suit the desires of every human under the Universal Declaration of Human Rights to live within the limits of human dignity and human rights, equality, freedoms, fundamental freedoms, political freedoms, as well as civil freedoms. In this case, it is a question of human rights, a question of good governance. It is also a question of constitution, constitutionality, constitutionalism, but also the principle of the rule of law. If the constitution is the apex law or the fundamental law under the principles of Professor Hans Kelsen, then it is the law whose integrity and supremacy must be protected by all good citizens and those who are aspiring to have a good life in a country that is democratic. For watching Peter here, University of Nairobi School of Law, Campus, and it would be great to read your comments, your remarks, and also to share your thoughts on this platform.